There are between 30 and 35 percent of people that are said to experience insomnia once a year, and 15 percent judge their insomnia to be serious. And many more actually suffer from disturbed sleep when they don't call it insomnia. And we know if we've ever experienced it, it leads to a diminished well being, feelings of vulnerability, distress, functioning below par, and general fatigue. But an interesting point is this that research shows even minor sleep disturbances. And they're so minor that the sleeper is not even aware of the disturbance. But these minor sleep disturbances that happen unbeknownst to you, they can cause daytime performance problems and possibly sleepiness as well. So you thought you were asleep, but the sleep was being slightly disturbed. So a little bit of noise in the environment is enough to do it. It's not dangerous to lose sleep. Mind you, if you totally were lacking sleep, if your sleep was totally prevented, as for animals say, they would die. But that can't happen to us seemingly. We will always fall asleep somehow or another. So it's not a dangerous condition and there's no sort of um, evidence that it causes ill health. There's no uh, diseases that result from insomnia. But it is noted that the pain threshold becomes reduced, concentration is reduced, irritability increases, and mental illnesses such as depression may be promoted or aggravated. So, but it's also interesting to remember Mark Twain's remark. He said that beds are not a safe place to be as so many people die in them. <laughs> <laughs> There's an interesting phenomenon of subjective insomnia. So people who have problems with their sleep, they often believe their problems are much worse than what, you know, is actually the problem. So in sleep disorder clinics, they report that half the people um, who say they can't sleep, they only think they can't sleep. These people, their report it takes them an hour to fall asleep, but they've actually fallen asleep in 15 minutes. <laughs> they actually sleep for five and three quarter hours versus six and a half hours for the control group. And in some experiments, you know, the actual insomniates thought that the instruments were faulty. <laughs> Such is their conviction of the poor night's sleep. So it's an interesting phenomenon. It's not sure to have periods of wakefulness through the night because between the light sleep and the rapid eye movements, rapid eye movement sleep, there are these little bit periods of wakefulness. But they're so brief as not to be remembered by most people. However, with age, they become longer and they may be noticed. The difficulty is if somebody has a problem, the, this day they might start thinking and that will prevent the next cycle of sleep. So very important, if there's wakefulness, just to stay with it and don't start conjuring up your latest anxiety. In the brain, there's a sleep center in the hypothalamus. That's the area of the brain that also controls body temperature, heartbeat, blood pressure, thirst, appetite, memory, behavior, a lot of fundamental functions. There's an awake center in the lower part of the brain, the brain stem, and there's a biological clock. This is overseen by a small little nucleus also in the hypothalamus, called the suprachiasmatic chiasmatic, chiasmatic, uh, nucleus, and it has a huge number of connections throughout the brain. So when you fall asleep, what happens is the brain center seems to take over more and more of the brain, while the awake center decreases its grip. And the circadian rhythm, the 24 hour cycle, is kicking in as well. And coming back to the Ayurvedic concept, you are the microcosm and there's the macrocosm. You, as the Ayurveda would say, so is the atom, so is the universe. As is the human body, so is the cosmic body. As is the human mind, so is the cosmic mind. So Ayurveda has this concept of this unique natural rhythms that the whole universe is, is functioning. And, and they're our rhythms. They're encoded in our genes. They're a part of us. And our difficulty is, rather than living in the fields and observing the sun set and, and seeing the moon and watching the seasons, we're totally disconnected and living to a different rhythm. So this can actually cause us quite a lot of difficulties in relation to sleep. It's essential that we do as much as possible and live in tune with our innate circadian, natural, daily rhythm. 
And the circadian rhythm is, there's a lot of measures like body temperature, growth and other hormones, enzymes, electrolyte excretions, sleep and wakefulness. They run on this 24-hour body clock. The lowest body temperature is about 4 in the morning, and it rises to a peak in the early evening. Now, the temperature somehow does seem to be connected, because there's this sudden drop in temperature in the late evening, and that drop in temperature seems to support sleep. So prior to or during falling asleep, many hormone levels rises, like the thyroid stimulating hormone, prolactin, testosterone, and also the hours of darkness, melatonin is secreted. So actually it's a very busy time, but it's a time of replenishing. One fundamental point, because I'd like to take sleep from three directions. The actual process of sleeping itself, how to support it. And then the second phase, how to prepare for sleep. And the third phase is, well, what are you doing all day? You know, because these three, can be used to help if the sleep is disturbed. Recognizing that sleep is natural, you just have to take an attitude to let be. You can't force yourself to fall asleep, no matter how hard you try. So nature doesn't function like that, nor does your nature. So you just rest comfortably and you just don't mind. You lie quietly, giving just that alone gives you significant rest and rejuvenation. So just relax and rest and be happy to lie there. And enjoy the process of resting. And if sleep doesn't come, just don't mind. Because it's in not minding, you're as if placing yourself in nature's hands and allowing nature to take over and allowing sleep to come. Some people are very tense going to bed, which is unfortunate. Some gentle abdominal breathing, where the tummy rises and falls as they breathe, gets the air into the deeper parts of the lungs and is much more relaxing. When we're tense, we tend to breathe from the chest only, expanding the tract to just the chest. So just that abdominal breathing, or a progressive muscular relaxation, where you tense muscles and then let go, starting at the feet and working up the body, and just feeling the contrast. That can be very relaxing as well, and just then and let you get into that state where you're relaxed and can lie, there, can lie there. Some people find they can't sleep because they start thinking of everything they're going to do tomorrow. They have to start making their lists of what they're going to say to so-and-so and what they're going to do to the So if that's a problem, it's very wise to sit down before you go to bed and make a list. And then when you get into the bed, you put the list into a box in your own mind and you close the lid and you're just lying there ready for sleep. And definitely don't use the bed as a time to think. It's not the time to sort out problems or to start thinking of great philosophies. We're going to have a bit of peace and quiet that we think. Once you start, it's very, no switching it off. So just, bed is for sleep. There's another thing that happens, people lying there, that they start to feel uncomfortable and fidget and move. Well, just realize that you know, the process of dissolving stress and fatigue and tension can involve this. And it's a very good thing. And you just are happy to let it happen. And just be with it again, not minding it. And if then the sensations take over and become very strong, you just let the attention go to the sensation. Because allowing the awareness, shifting spontaneously from one sensation to another, helps to dissolve those stresses. The last thing you should ever do is get out of the bed to read, watch TV, or become active. Just stay there and be with it. Much better. Much more restful. Sleep may come. So in summary, take a reasonably early bedtime. Establish a soothing routine, beginning at the same time every night. And once in bed, rest comfortably, eyes closed, not minding. If restless or racing thoughts, recognize that even these thoughts represent the process of healing that's taking place. And if unpleasant sensations arise, allow attention to just spontaneously feel them. Just rest easily in nature's hands. <laughs>